Natural law is what I believe that God set up so that everything and everyone is equal within the new domain of creation. Natural law is God's laws for the operation of life and creation throughout. This law does not allow people to have a certain by to get around it. It is non-transgressible and it is sure as the day is long. The only problem that I have come to witness with it is that the, the physical world tends to have a lot more immediate effect than natural law and spiritual law. Natural law and spiritual law takes a little more time to come into play because it works within the perspective of eternity, not the immediacy of what's in front of us today. So when you pray for relief or help with a situation, the situation is going to be much more present and much more real than the answer from spirit is immediately because like I said, it takes a little bit of time for it to work through the layers and come back as what's good for you eternally, not just what's good for you now. And what brought this thought process about for me was thinking about the difficult things in my life as well as the good things. And the difficult things I've come to realize shape me as surely as the, as the good things do. A lot of times we try, I try to have tried to get the difficult things resolved so I could share in the rewards of it. But in the attempt to resolve the difficult thing, I am spiritually growing as much as when I enjoy the fruits of the labor. So I would ask you just to take time and realize that the difficult and challenging things shape you as much, if not more, than the rewards of the efforts of resolving those things. We are many times changed by the effort rather than the accomplishment of what we're involved in. Just the attempt to change, the attempt to resolve, produces a tremendous amount of growth within us. So you should never gauge the effort you're involved in by the end result of it. I just thank you for listening to me. The next portion of the service is the healing portion. I'm looking around the room. Do we have any healers in the room other than Marty? Anybody that he doesn't come in? Um, I'll have uh, Bill step up and help today if you will. I'd like to have Bill and Marty take their positions behind the chairs. We get a lot up there. Dr. Thomas, you can pitch in and help too. <laughs> The way this works for those that are new to the church is that you have a seat on the chair and the healing practitioners channel the spiritual healing energy for physical contact healing. And the rest of us will be guided in meditation from Ashton. And during the meditation, you'll hear this, which means the chair has become vacant. So if you want to enjoy the meditation, I will keep looking over to see if the chair is open, that way you can enjoy both parts of the service. So I would ask us to begin the healing portion by reading on the back of the hymnal the prayer for spiritual healing. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstruction from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Let's get ready for the meditation. Find a comfortable position. Sit down. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Breathe ahead and breathe out. Let go of the thoughts that are occupying your mind. Anything that's on your mind.
very peaceful and quiet place within. Connect with this peaceful presence while you breathe. Feel the rhythm of your peaceful breath. to this presence 
and feel the presence of God within your heart. Unconditional love unfolding through your heart, through your essence. Feel this energy flowing and flourishing your entire body. Feel this God's loving energy embracing you and healing you, comforting you. Feel the warmth of this energy, the beauty this energy that is wrapping around your body from within and without. Like a warm blanket comforting you, soothing you. compassionate heart feel God's unconditional love within your heart that is capable to love everyone unconditionally.
think of someone that you are in conflict anyone that has caused pain or hurt envision this person with your mind's eye just focus on your heart feel that warm energy the power of this healing energy take in a deep breath and send this love energy from your heart to that person let go of the emotions and the feeling that were created through the actions the situations just send love to that person and see the person receiving this love energy from your heart straight to their heart see this person receiving the energy See the situation and feel it healed with love and acceptance. direct this healing energy from your heart to their heart have a forgiving Let go, let go. Let go of those who have hurt you. Turn them over to God. And surrender to the will. Let thy will be done in heaven and on earth. Let thy will be done, God in the highest most, that seeks the highest good. the 
sense of freedom and relief as you let go. Feel God's love filling your heart. Your mind is at ease and at peace. This is your divine presence. Embrace your divinity. love energy connecting to the person next to you. Growing and evolving into a bigger energy. Holding each one of us together. Feel the energy circulating in this room. And see it extending out further to the earth atmosphere. Envision Mother Earth <coughs> is wrapped with this beautiful divine healing energy. See everyone is being touched with this divine love energy. See the connection. See the beauty. Feel the beauty of universal love and the universal consciousness. That is connecting us together as one consciousness. Create this vision and see the earth in a beautiful and harmonious place. People around the world are united with love, peace, and harmony. We have the power to create, create your reality and your intentions for the highest good of all the highest good of our planet, Mother Earth. And see yourself part of this universal consciousness. Feel the beauty of every person. Feel the beauty of the ocean the animals, the plants, the minerals, and feel the connection. Let this vision integrate deep in your consciousness. As you start coming back slowly to your physical body. The next portion of the service is the inspirational lecture.
Today we have Reverend Diane Davis, who currently resides in the Casadega Spiritualist Camp. She's been a teacher, a medium, a healer for over 36 years. She always presents her point of view with a bit of humor and a bit of sharing with her own life. I've always enjoyed being around her and with her, so please welcome Reverend Diane Davis. physically tired. <laughs> okay, I just want you to know this is a norm right now. And so uh, I personally wondered if I was getting sick because I just kept feeling like all I wanted to do was sleep. And then I remembered the time that I went on hormone therapy, but that's another story. That <laughs> and, and, and then I wanted to sleep because it was the wrong medication that made me feel like I was pregnant. Uh, so that was another story there too. Okay, so I came today and all week long I've been trying to gather my thoughts because I uh, usually will try to have a theme when I walk in the room and then just expand it blending with the energies of the people in the room and those in the unseen side of life and probably somebody who sat there yesterday might want to commingle and thought too. But anyway, what I wanted to talk with you about today is um, just a question that I want you to ask yourself later and that is, do you put broccoli in your milk? <laughs> okay. Well, natural law, I've been teaching natural law for 36 years, and, and the law of blending is just one of the many thousands and gazillions of laws, but it means to combine. And, and the blending that we do, we do it in groups, we do it collectively, you do it with partners or spouses or the hopeful ones that are out there too. And then we do that with our families and our coworkers, and we do that in situations where we want to blend in some way, shape, or form. And if you notice, sometimes in our humanity at this time, it's not always easy to blend with things. It's not always easy to blend with people. It's not always easy to blend with ideas. It's not always easy to blend with technology. Oh my God. And, uh, but the reason I mentioned the broccoli in your milk, you thought I lost the thought there, <laughs> um, is that there are so many things that in our lives, in the early years of our lives, that we develop as our personality traits. And prior to those pituitary changes between the ages of five and seven, most of us have learned a lot of our paranoias, our fears, our concerns, not because we have consciously rationalized it out, but because of the fact of what we've been exposed to, what we've heard, and our caregivers and the influence of so many people around us. So as adults, uh, and almost all of us, almost, you hear the word almost, all of us in this room are adults, and I'm not going to mention all the names of those of you who aren't, uh, but, um, uh, but the, the thing that we've learned is in those early years, what happens for us in our adulthood is we often take those fears, those truths that we may have experienced in those early years and we transpose them and we add to them throughout our lives. And so as adults, we take them into our adulthood and they are not necessarily truth. Oh, but most people think that they know the truth. When you've read that book or you've had that meditation or you go through that experience and you think you have the truth of the situation. So one thing I always encourage people to know is you're expanding every day, every moment. While you're doing that, you're adding to the very soul of you by being in a body. The soul of you wants to create joyfully and quickly and impeccably. And how, it, how you blend is because of you physically manifesting the soul's creations. Are they the big ones? They might not be the whopper. They might be the little ones. They might be the blink of your eyes that you're doing intentionally when you find something's in them. 
But what I'm encouraging you to consider is, how many truths do you hold on to even to this day that may or may not serve you, but you hide them like you did when you were a child and you put that piece of broccoli in your milk so that you didn't have to eat it. Remember that? <laughs> you didn't do that? Uh, well, I did. Uh, and I didn't do malicious and terrible things. But there were those things that you kind of skirted around because you didn't want to make people upset with you. You didn't want people to um, be angry. And heaven forbid that you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, in working with intuition workshops, a huge amount in my life, is always encouraging people. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about being accurate. And how many of our truths are really accurate today? Did you know that a third of your reality is real and the rest you fill in the blanks as you go along? <laughs> well, we do. We project and project and project and project. I was staring in the bathroom mirror this morning. I know none of you did that, and a few of you don't look like you did anyway. I'm not teasing about looking in the bathroom mirror. I was really working on it. But anyway, um, but I have this little, I have lots of little quotes in my bathroom, and uh, I always send people in to go to the bathroom because they're a captive audience and they have to read the quotes. And, um, uh, and one of them says, if, you feel if it feels uncomfortable, you're living with projection. And so often we project our truth on all kinds of things. We project and we project and we project. And part of the reason we project is because we want to protect. Because the instinctive mind thought of you will respond to everything immediately through self-defense and self-protection. When you're working with the energies of life and when you're wanting to blend with something that you're doing, have you ever noticed that when it goes smoothly or it seems to go really well in some way, it becomes so much more than you ever dreamed? Because you're not projecting a, a total picture of how it has to turn out. You're allowing your energy to commingle with that very idea or situation or the other people involved. And out of it comes this fantastic or amazing event, opportunity, or manifestation. Your life is totally filled with this throughout. Steve was mentioning earlier about, and I can't paraphrase it because I was sitting over here. I have a hard time during meditations because meditations are beautiful. It's just the fact that I get high wired, and so it's real hard to sit there and try to get sedate. I, you know, it's like I try to, and I go. Anyway, so, so if I wiggle around a little bit, that's what I'm doing. This little part of me is just ready and on. And that's the interesting thing with the meditation, you were talking about power, you were talking about heart, you were talking about unconditional love from the divine. In natural law, the wonderful thing is that quality is there inside of you always. It's never taken from you. You're not punished because of anything you've ever done or said or even thought. You know, we know about those thoughts. That's why when you come to a reader, you just want to be careful what you've been thinking about. <laughs> so, how do you get the broccoli in the milk? Well, what happens is throughout our life, there's a lot of things that we think we're going to like or dislike. And we may and we may not. There are situations, opportunities, uh, activities, events that maybe we don't want to participate with, and that is our divine right to not participate. But then there are other things that we often participate with and they don't always feel very comfortable. You know that feeling of something not feeling very comfortable? Okay, don't have it yet. But you know what I'm talking about? Well, that's because there's an energy within you that's harmony. And that energy of harmony is like the, the, the chef. And I like the Swedish chef on Sesame Street to go to the table and he slaps all that flour all over. <laughs> and if you ever need a good laugh, go on YouTube and Google and Sesame Street chef popcorn. He does a whole different kind of food with the popcorn and it's really sweet. I watch these things sometimes just to lighten up. Because sometimes life is not real easy, is it? 
So what happens for us in the law of blending, the laws, the, the natural laws are wonderful because they're about the energies of life and the movement of those energies with you and with your life, with the activities that you're involved in and the things that you're thinking about and, and wanting to pursue. I was talking to a woman yesterday, and this is the broccoli and the milk, one of them. And in reading for her, she had had a horrendous time getting a hold of me. I need a secretary because my train ships can't do the job very well. And, um, and so I hadn't, I hadn't, we were having this hard time connecting with when can I come, when would you like to come, when are you available to come, oh, I can't do it then, then I can. And we were going around, 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 and around. And finally, we got an appointment set up. She came yesterday, she walked to the door, and I said, you are so brave, and thank you for your endurance. And, and she came in, we sat down, and it was one of those appointments that my humor just sort of kicked in a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and so I was talking to her, and I was talking a lot, because in the first several minutes, I just talked nonstop. And uh, I chose the right profession. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and, um, uh, I did. I did. A little aside is I, I, you know, I was one of those little kids in school where I had to write a, t a thousand times, I will not talk to the class. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so there I am talking with her, and I'm talking to her about some very important things, and, and um, some things about some people who had passed away, and some things that were rather serious and on her mind, and I looked right at her, and I said, okay, now I want to tell you something. You're either going to really laugh, or you're going to think I've really lost it. And I said, or you're going to think I'm really brilliant. I said, I I'll take the latter one. Mm -hmm. um, and so I said, I see you belly dancing. Well, she, she's a little chunky chicken like me, and I, you know, and, and, she, and she, she starts <coughs> laughing. Well, see, I don't know what the truth is. Now, how many of you do this? When you say something to somebody, you project what they're thinking about it, or their opinion about it. Huh? It's common, it's human, it's thought. It's when you haven't blended with an experience, it's when you sat aside and outside of it. So here's what happened was, I just kept going. And I mentioned something about it in the fall, or late September, early October, something, something. And we, f we finished that portion of the, the bulk of the reading, and then I asked her if she had any questions. And she said, I just have to tell you, she said, the reason I was laughing when you mentioned the belly dancing, she said, I always wanted to take belly dancing. And I said, well, you go, girl, because in late September, early October, you got an opportunity to do just that. And she said, and I know none of you have ever done this, right? I've always wanted to do belly dancing, but I have to lose weight before I do it. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, are you nuts? Mm -hmm. and, and then I told her, I said, you call an instructor and talk to them about the people in their class and find out. Find out, get some facts, get some information. When you're projecting about anything, anything that's making you unhappy, anything that's un uncertain in your life, we do this about relationships, we do this about conversations all the time. And look at emails, oh my gosh, and I don't text, so I can't claim that, but text to me would be even worse than emails for projection. And then there's the one up on Ellen DeGeneres where she shows all the, the mess ups that happen with people. I, that, that's kind of fun. But anyway, <laughs> what, what I'm getting about projection is that when you're blending with something in your life, it doesn't mean that it's all cozy, warm, and fuzzy. It might, you might like to have it that way. You might hope that it's going to be that way. But look around this room and look at all the colors and look at the people and look at how we're all so unique. And yet, it's true that we're all one because we're all comprised of that same energy, that energy of the infinite that is all life. I call it the isness because it's out here in this thing called space. And it's in you, and it's in me, and it's in that chair, and it's right here, and it's probably in this microphone that I conveniently knock off 
every time I'm here because my hands start waving. <laughs> anyway, but you're blending with it all the time. When you don't feel that, when you feel disharmonious to a situation, sometimes it's to look about what you're projecting, or it's to look about what you're hiding, or it's to look about do you have broccoli in your milk? Because there's something that you may feel that you have to hide, not because you're malicious, not because you're a liar, not because you're a thief, but because of the fact that it's something that you want to keep hidden, because it's something that you perceive doesn't have value. So my next question, can you see me back there? Hi, hi. Um, I'll move around. Do I have a time limit here? <laughs> the camera shuts off after an hour and a half. <laughs> It's a dangerous shake of the head, <laughs> Anyway, um, you know, the, the next thing I said to her is I said, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and tell me the first time you can ever remember feeling that you weren't good enough. It isn't about your body. It isn't about what you can't do. It's about not feeling that you can have what you want. And it's, not, and it's about the fact of not being equal equal to life. And so many of us grow with that. And it doesn't matter about blaming, oh, I'm sorry, am I messing up the camera? No, I'll just wide range it. Have, feel free to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Safe. <laughs> 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 said the wide range it. Go ahead, move around. Why do you have a wireless mic there? Okay, so what happens within you when there are things in your life that you're witnessing in our humanity at this time struggles? You're witnessing a change in government, you're witnessing people being a little outrageous, not to mention the rage that people have too. And, and I know it's none of you. And I know that none of you are the ones that want to sit in my back seat when I'm driving down the interstate because you're in your car and you want to be in mine. You know the type? <laughs> oh, okay. You're not one of those either. But, you know, the neat thing is that when you're blending with the traffic, it's an interesting thing because there can be kind of a flow until that certain person comes and goes... <laughs> And, and messes all that flow up. But, but you know what? It is what it is. And the exciting thing in life is because uh, nature has this wonderful way of not punishing you. Nothing that you have ever done is so horrendous that you deserve to be treated whatever way that you might experience that feels difficult or creates an annoyance, a hurt, an anger. Now, that does, not, uh, that does not discredit the laws of society, but the laws of the, your universe are uniquely yours. And those laws are precious. Law means system of control, and nature means instinctive. So it's the things that you have within you that you have the ability to control you. You cannot control the rest of the world, but you can control self. And how we do that and what we do is expanding constantly. Every moment that you close your eyes and meditate, there's an opportunity for a new moment, a new experience, a new healing, a new breath, a new idea. I had broccoli in the milk when my eyes were closed just now. Pretty ingenious, wasn't it? Okay. So, so it's important to know that you have this ability, but also you have it there when you feel stuck, or you feel depressed, or you feel uncertain, or you feel scared. How many times in your life are you facing some changes? You don't know what they're going to look like. They look like a door that has a dark entrance to it. Dark is not ominous. It just means unseen, unclear, not lit up yet, right? What happens when you're walking towards a doorway that can feel that way for you, where you don't know what the next step is? You may have all the faith in the world about what you're doing or the steps you're taking and the direction you're headed in, 
but you may still feel that little undercurrent of harmony and that little undercurrent of a blending energy that hasn't completely gotten it together and flowed yet. It is like a difference between there are different recipes that you can make and when you're making a recipe, uh, a food recipe, many times it's one where it does not require a lot of stirring. You can leave some lumps in it. Those are my kind of recipes. <laughs> but you can leave some lumps in it and because it doesn't want to have all those ingredients uh, creamed together um, so much. Then you have the next kind of recipe that gathers them all together blends them to a degree, you want to get out most of the lumps, and and that's pretty much pretty standard, I believe. I don't cook a lot, so I'm uh, here. But anyway, um, but the third one is when you cream things together, and you cream things together, and you remember how you would stir and stir and stir and stir, fudge, fudge on the stove. Oh my goodness, arm got tired, still stirring, because it's that wonderful chocolate. There's, see, there's a reward here, isn't there? Okay. So, but we have that. We have that with the things we do and the things we accomplish and the things that we want. In your life, if there are experiences, in your life, if there are moments, you have today and on. You don't have today and the past. You have the past to be the moments that can lead you and help you but you are a tapestry of every moment tied end to end that you experience in this embodiment. The blending that you are able to do in life, the blending you are able to do in meditations with your own intuitions, the blending that you are able to do with your own healing force and healing presence, the blending that you are able to do with the, uh, the, the other healers when they are working with you. The blending that you're doing with your closest friend, the wisest teacher or mentor that you might have ever known, those moments are pretty sacred to you and pretty important, but they're just as important as the moments of blending with laughter. I was listening to Prairie Home Companion on my way over here. I don't look forward to the drive coming over here, but once I get here, I'm really happy to be here. It's just getting from point A to point B. I know none of you go through that. But with, especially with our wonderful construction on the road that will probably be there until 2055. But um, the, the neat thing was that I heard something, and it was one of those things that when you hear it, you have that gut laugh. It just comes flying out of you. You know the type? Well, I had a couple of those in the car, and I thought, I love this feeling. I love that feeling. The levity that you have of thought, the levity of you, that you have of your own emotions, there's laws of gravity, laws of levitation. There's all kinds of natural laws that you can experience, you can learn about, you can discover, and you can observe. But one thing I would encourage you to observe now is the broccoli you put in your own milk. And, and I mean that very, very sincerely. If there's something that you're hiding or keeping from the rest of the world, not because it's something that you have to let the world know about, you don't have to rent that marquee and put it in the front yard, uh, and it, it doesn't have to expose some deep secret of yours. But if there's something within you that is keeping you from the joy of you, and keeping her from that belly dancing opportunity, why shouldn't she have opportunity to do what anybody does? And what about you? And what about you? And it's important to know that um, you were mentioning about the divine and the isness of all life to me is everything and one thing more. And it's that one thing more you haven't created it's that one next breath you're going to take. It's that one new relationship you're going to develop. It's that one new job, new talent, new aha moment, new book you're going to read, or that walk you're going to take. It might be a step, and it doesn't have to be profound, but it is yours. And you know if it's yours, by golly, it's pretty precious. So when you find that there's something where you've got a piece of broccoli in your milk, 
think about it, not from a point of judgment, not from a point of devaluing all that you are, but a point of discovery. The mind has this wonderful capacity for going to self-defense, self-preservation that quickly. But you know what? The next place is consistency, where we look for something consistent. And the third place is exploration. It's the place I have to get to when I'm talking to all of you. Otherwise, I repeat my lectures. And do you really think I can repeat this one? <laughs> Be gentle with yourself, and if you feel that blending energy, and it doesn't feel harmonious to you the way you would like it to be, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It means it's a place of discovery, and it means that if you just pause one moment for discernment, you may discover that it will be so much more than you ever dreamed. Thanks so much for being here.